This is what they felt like when it happened. And today, it's how we should feel too. Because what it meant for them, it means for us. Hey, happy Easter, everybody. Welcome to Fusion Church Online Sunday morning Easter service. I am so excited and pumped to be here with you guys. My name is Armando, and I'm the lead pastor of Fusion Church. And today we are also finishing up our message series entitled, Can You See Him? And this whole series really just prepared us to see God through the challenges, the difficulties, and the trials that we're in in life. And man, during this COVID-19 season, it's so important. But today... We are celebrating an empty tomb. Our Lord and Savior Jesus has risen from the dead. He's come out of the tomb. And with his resurrection, we are birthed life. We're birthed into life, into hope, in a future to come. Man, God has birthed uh, the ability for healing of our diseases, sicknesses, and so on. Everything Jesus said is made true and confirmed because he rose from the dead. Man, I don't know about you, but when someone raises from the dead, I'm going to tune in and listen to what they have to say. He is indeed God, and he triumphed and had victory over sin, death, disease, sickness, pestilence. Man, you name it, Christ has victory over it right now. He's alive and well, sitting on a throne in heaven. Man, king of the universe, king over creation, king over your life and mine, and king even over those who don't even acknowledge him. Man, he is indeed a risen uh, savior who has power and victory. And that's the God that I serve and the God that many of you at home serve. And some of you may choose to serve today. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but today we're at the end of Holy Week. And Holy Week uh, started with Palm Sunday, which was Jesus's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And actually that also started his journey to the cross. And his journey to the cross led him through Holy Thursday, which was the day we commemorate uh, him giving us the ordinance of communion. Uh, man, it was also the night that he was handed over and that led us into Good Friday. And Good Friday is called good, even though Jesus hung himself on the cross and died for us. It's good because he was our lamb slain that ushered in the forgiveness of our sins and brought us the opportunity to have our past, our guilt, our shame, all those things that you and I are not so proud of. All of those things died with Christ when we put our hope and faith in him. And then after Good Friday, Jesus was in the grave. He was dead and he rose on Sunday morning, on Easter Sunday morning. He rose from the dead and with him, the newness of life, that promise to you and I rose as well. So your past, if you place your faith in Jesus, your past died with him and your future rose with him. And that's the hope really of the gospel that uh, your past died with him and your future rose for, uh, with him. And man, I got to tell you, he endured all that, the cross, the, the, um, the pain, the, the nails going into his feet and into his hands for your sake and mine so that you could live a life with the hope of an eternity with God so that you can live a life with no more guilt, no more shame, no past, and any disease, virus, and sickness you and I are able to pray to God for with the hope of healing. That doesn't mean that you and I manipulate God and control God. God chooses to heal who he heals and, and doesn't 
to who he doesn't. However, we have to understand God does not waste your pain, neither should we. And I know that whether I'm alive in Christ or dead in the grave, I am with God because death will not take us. Death cannot have us. Jesus had victory over this life. He had victory over death. You and I, if you place your faith in Jesus, you have the full assurance of the life to come with God. You will never die. You will never see death. You will never taste death. Man, it's just a transition into this life to the next, a greater life that is more real than this life even now. Think about it this way. When we think about the big scope of eternity, we think about all this in a measurable, you cannot measure the expanse. And where we live right now is this little finite period of time of about 70 to 80 years, maybe 90 if you're really lucky. But it's a small piece of a greater eternity with God. That was bought and paid for by Jesus. Man, today we celebrate a, a, a living, rising from the dead Savior. But Man, I got to tell you that um, it, it, Good Friday, we just celebrated that as a church. Understand what that day was because it gives this day, uh, I mean, that, this day gives that day credibility is what I'm trying to say. And you see on Good Friday, Jesus hung himself as a Passover lamb for you and I. Man, that goes back to the Exodus story, the first Passover, where the, where the Lord passed over the Israelite people who had a lamb, the blood of the lamb over their doorpost and, and death passed over them. Man, in the same way, Jesus is the blood over our doorpost for those who place their faith and trust in Jesus. And death, sickness, disease will pass over you. And man, his resurrection brought that credibility. So I place my trust and hope in Jesus. And if you're a skeptic and you're like, hey man, I, I don't know what I believe about Jesus. Man, I, I'm not even so sure that that happened. Let me say this. How do you know anything in history happened? Let's talk a little bit of apologetics real quick. How do you trust that World War II happened? How do you know the Spanish flu happened? How do you know anything in history happened? The simple answer is you and I read it in a history book or you read it in a newspaper. And yet we believe it. Why? Because we trust firsthand account. We trust firsthand account so much that, man, even in a court of law today, that upon a witness, two witnesses, three witnesses, they're able to hold a trial. Firsthand account means a lot. And I will tell you that Jesus's death and resurrection is probably, uh, not probably, it is the, one of the most uh, documented pieces of history the world has ever known. Uh, for instance, his death was documented, not just in the Bible, in thousands of manuscripts and writing uh, and philosophical writings outside of the Bible. Uh, his resurrection was also documented in many more than just one place. Uh, it was written down in history. It was eyewitness testimony of the empty tomb. Not one person said it. Multiple people saw the empty tomb. There was no evidence to the contrary. No body was ever produced, meaning Jesus indeed rose from the dead. Nobody found a dead body. Uh, man, I look at the lives of changed believers, that the power of God that we read about in this most wonderful book, the Bible, uh, is still alive and well in the lives of believers. And I see the evidence of the Holy Spirit in my life and the lives of others. Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he walked the earth for approximately 40 days and was seen by over 500 eyewitnesses. Think about that. There were over 500 people that saw the risen Lord and it was documented. Man, that is credible history. And it goes on, man. There's over 12 accounts of people seeing him uh, after his resurrection, both in and out of the Bible. And all of that confirms what we now believe and celebrate as Easter Sunday. If you're a skeptic, all that you have to do is go back and look at how we deem history to be credible. And what you will find is that this gospel story, that this good news moment, that there was a savior who died on a cross and rose from the dead, that it is well documented as a part of history and one of the most credible pieces of history that the world has ever known. Man, the Christian faith is not a blind faith. Man, look at the person next to you or, or, or write it in the chat, I ain't blind because you're not blind. You do not have a blind faith. Faith is the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Like we place our faith in, in trust in Jesus Christ and, and we place our trust in what our spiritual eye sees, but it's not blind. It's actually based on truth. It's based on evidence. It's based on history. It's not a blind, weak faith, folks. And I take so much hope in that credibility 
but his resurrection confirms it all. Let's understand this. If Jesus did everything he did, said everything he said, died and never rose from the dead, you and I would not be having this conversation this morning. We wouldn't even be here having service. Man, the story of Christ would have died with him. But the fact that he rose from the dead, everything else is made true because of this one simple event. Everything you believe about Jesus boils down to his resurrection. If this happened, then everything else is true. This is the most credible, uh, credible event in our faith. And if you're feeling alone today and you've entered into this moment, know that you're not alone. The God of the universe who died for your sins, died so that you can have healing, died so that you can have protection from pestilence, disease, and plague. Man, he is with you today. But do you know even Jesus himself felt completely alone for a moment, but yet he was not alone. Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at uh, John chapter 16, uh, verse 32 and 33. Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come. He's talking about that moment that he is delivered by Judas over to his, those that want to kill him. And he was taken captive. When There will be a time when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone. I may feel alone, but I'm not alone. People may not be around me and I'm not alone. Man, I may be quarantined, isolated, alone in my house, but yet I am not alone. For the Father is with me. Do you know God is with you right now? Do you know God is with me right now in my living room? I've invited you guys in virtually, but God is here spiritually, physically, man, God is with you right there on the couch next to you. Look to your left or look to your right and say, what's up, Jesus? He's right there, folks. And then verse 33, I have said these things to you that in me, you may have peace. Man, peace does not come from the news. It doesn't come from the good news we hope to get from the media or from our government. The good news is in Christ and you can have peace in God despite the circumstances of your life. Do you know I place my trust in Jesus and I know God is good even when my circumstances are bad? I place my full confidence and trust in Jesus Christ and from that I receive peace and so do you. And that's what Jesus is saying to his apostles and to you and I today. In the world, you will have tribulation. Guys, don't be surprised. There are troubles in this world you and I are going to experience. Right now, all of us are being impacted by COVID-19 and on the spectrum from very mild to severe. In the mild, some of us are just merely being inconvenienced by COVID-19. Some have reduced, uh, have been reduced in their hourly income. Some have lost their jobs. Some have gotten sick and recovered. Some have gotten sick and passed away. Others are grieving the loss of a loved one today. I want to tell you on this Easter Sunday, when Jesus rose from the dead, so did your hope. Your hope was pulled up out of the ashes of death, out of sickness, out of, out of despair. And God is giving you a hope that you could place your trust in Jesus and all the promises of God are credited to you and I. And, and, and let's go back here. In this world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. Man, take heart. Take note of this. Stand on this truth. I've overcome the world. So will you. I've overcome sin and death. So will you. Man, death couldn't hold me. Death couldn't keep me. And it can't hold or keep you either. Because where Jesus goes, his people go. What Jesus resurrects from, his people resurrect from. What Jesus experiences healing from, so do you and I. Do you know when he hung himself on the cross, when those lashes uh, uh, hit him on the back, and man, his blood blood ran red. Man, that ushered in a season of healing for your life and mine. By his stripes, we're made well. We're able to experience healing. We can go straight to God in confidence that not only does he hear our prayers, but if it be his will, he also has the power and faithfulness to heal you, to heal me, to heal our loved ones as well. And we take heart. I take note. I stand on this truth. Jesus says, take heart. I've overcome the world. Your peace today, folks, Easter Sunday, and I hope it extends even after today into the rest of your life and mine, is your peace is in Christ and Christ alone. Man, his name is Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. He is my peace. He's my rescuer. He's my rock. He's my shelter. Man, I find rescue and safety in the shadow of the Most High. So can you and I today. And that's what Easter's about. Man, we are under quarantine, right? We're shut in. We can't go outside. Man, there are no egg hunts happening today. There's no cute little Easter bunnies going around. And there are no community events. 
But man, Easter was never about those things, folks. This could literally be the most powerful Easter of your life. The angel of death passed over Israel in the Exodus story. Same way today, the spirit of COVID is passing over your house and mine. You have the full protection of God. If you're sick today, tap into that healing. If your family member or friend is sick, you need to pray and God just may deliver that on your behalf because the blood of the lamb is over you. And the biggest victory of all is not the little things that you and I think about. And and it's not little sickness and disease. I mean, to us, it's huge. But God had a greater victory He healed the sickness of your soul and the sickness of my soul. So Easter, guys, it could be the most powerful Easter ever for you and me. As Jesus rose from the dead, so does my hope raise out of the ashes of COVID-19. So does my hope raise out of the despair that is felt by so many I love and care about who have lost friends and family members due to COVID-19. Man, there is a time and a season for grief, but man, the sun will come up in the morning. God will leverage this for his good. I believe in a God who rose from the dead, who was a redeemer, not just of my soul, but of my situation. If you are sick right now, I believe God is going to use that and redeem that. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, and many of us are, I believe God is going to use that loss and he's going to bring healing to your soul somehow because he's good. I don't know how he's going to do it. Man, God is a mystery to me in many ways and he is to you. We can't fathom or understand the fullness, the wisdom, the the bigness of God. But what I know, I know. And I know he's true. I know he's just. I know he's faithful. His name is faithful. He is Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Man, he is, he is the God of, that brings healing to your soul. He is your healer and mine. Why don't we take a moment and let's journey this with the New Testament believer, actually the folks that discovered the empty tomb. Let's pick up in Mark 16 and experience what they did in that moment. So Mark 16, uh, we're going to start with... Um, I believe this is verse uh, verse three here. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and another went to anoint Jesus's body. Verse four, let's pick up there. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robe sitting on the right side, <clears throat> and they were alarmed. Verse six. Don't be alarmed, he said. Don't be afraid. (laughs) You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He's alive. What he told you before the cross is true and just. You just forgot about it. Some of us today have forgot about the goodness of God because we're suffering in COVID-19. Some of us today feel like we've lost our faith in the... uh, because we're overcome with the fear-mongering of the media. We're listening to the media more than we're diving into the hope and the truth of God in this most important book that brings life to our soul. So many of us have forgotten the promises of God because, man, honestly, we're distracted by how COVID-19 impacted us. And that's exactly where these New Testament believers were. They had forgotten what Jesus spoke before because they got caught up with the death. They got caught up with the cross. They got so caught up that the man who they followed around for three and a half years of his ministry. Man, he died somehow in their minds and hearts that erased everything he said. What I want to tell you is what God spoke prior to COVID-19, what you knew about God prior to COVID-19, it is still true today. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. COVID-19 is just another enemy in your life, but it's nothing for God. God will defeat COVID-19 and deliver you from it just like he's defeated everything else you've been through, just like he's defeated every other monster and giant in your life. God is your deliverer. He is called deliverer. So he has risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as I told you. Verse eight, trembling and bewildered, the women went out, fled the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Are you serious? This is how this thing ends? That they ran away alarmed, scared, and bewildered? Some of us today are sitting feeling bewildered. Man, how could this have happened? How could a good God have allowed COVID-19 to strike? How could a good God have allowed COVID-19 to fall upon us? Man, I've prayed night and day for COVID-19 to be lifted, and it's still here. Guys, I know the feeling. Man, I have, let me say this. 
I have seen storm after storm in my life. I've seen good moments as well. I mean, life is a mixed bag, right? Let, let's be honest. There is wonderful things in this life. Man, there's so much about life I love and I celebrate. So many happy memories. But there are some deep, dark moments. I've had to bury loved ones. Man, I've had people come down with sicknesses and ailments that I love, both in my family of origin and our church. And, and I've prayed for them. Some were healed, others were not. Man, sometimes I'm left bewildered and I'm struggling. I'm like, God, I'm praying for this. I'm believing in faith and I don't know how it's going to turn out. When we think of COVID-19, guys, I'm with you. I'm left a little bewildered as well. God, when is this going to end? What's going to be the state of the stock market after? What will our economy look like? God, what does our retirement plans look like? Stock market is way down. God, who's going to get sick next? I mean, the, the list of concerns goes on and on and on. And we all feel it together. We'll, we are bewildered. God, I believe you will rescue us from this. God, when will that happen? God, I believe you're going to redeem the season we're in. What does that look like? Man, all of my hope doesn't rest in what I think the answer is going to be now. It rests in this empty tomb moment. Man, when I am left bewildered and I don't know what's going to happen, I look back over God's resume and I reckon to myself, if he rose from the dead, if he had victory over sin, over death, over pestilence, over disease, over virus, over any ailment that we experience, he's got to have victory again today because this is the most important event in all of the history of mankind, for the Christian and the non-Christian, because all of us at one time who claimed the name of Jesus, there was a time and season in your life and mine when we were unbelievers, when we were not followers of Jesus. And like everyone else, we have to make a decision to become a follower of Jesus. And so the world right now who is not following Jesus, this is the most important event for them as well. Our whole faith is contingent upon it that our belief of whether God is going to bring an end to COVID-19 is contingent upon it. Man, do you know if Jesus never rose from the dead, your faith would be useless? Literally, your faith would be a joke if Jesus never rose from the dead. Our hope in the life to come, it's only made possible because of this resurrection. Our hope of healing, praying for those that are sick in my family, in our church and beyond, all of those would be pointless prayers if he never rose from the dead. Just the idea of praying would be pointless. Man, this message would be absolutely empty if it was void of a resurrecting Savior. But we have a God who indeed rose from the dead. We have a God who brings hope to the hopeless, to bring food and nourishment to the hungry. The Word of God says that man doesn't live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God, God is here to nourish your soul and mind if we allow the seed of faith to be deposited in our lives. If we allow the truth of the gospel to be the thing we stand on and not the thing we're hearing in the media. Guys, your hope is in a resurrected King, in a Messiah, in a Savior, who was able to save you fully and completely from the circumstances of your life. And because he rose from the dead, man, you can place your hope and trust in him for everything, not just your soul uh, and, and eternity, but also for everything you faith uh, face in this life. Man, and I want you to open your app right now. If you don't have our church app, you can download it simply by texting Fusion app, that's one word, to 77977. Again, that's Fusion app, one word, to 77977. I have a list of 10 things that we're able to place our hope in because he resurrected from the dead. You guys can look at that. My message notes are there. Man, I'm just going to read through these quickly because I believe you and I, we need to hear them. Man, I need encouragement today. And I was encouraged waking up. Today's Easter Sunday. But with that, it reminded me that if he rose from the dead, everything else that he says is true. So let's go through this together. I have hope because he rose from the dead that whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. That's a hope that I can put my trust in. If I get sick with COVID-19 and it takes me out, I will live forever with Jesus. I will live forever with God. My hope is not in this life. Guys, everyone is going to die. Every one of us is going to die at some point, but we're not really going to die if we're in Christ. We're going to live forever and ever with God, without sickness, without guilt, without shame, without any ailment, without stain. Man, the thing you regret most in your life, it's not even with you if you're a follower of Jesus, but when you're in glory with God, it definitely ain't with you. You're not gonna hold on to that because the glory of God is all around you. When I walk into COVID-19 and I see people getting sick and some passing away, it causes me to sit and reflect over the condition of my soul 
I want you right now at home to reflect over the condition of your soul. Are you right with God? If you were to die right now, do you have the full confidence and assurance that you're going to go to heaven? If you claim Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life and you place your faith in Him, the answer is you do, no matter how you feel. You may feel alone, but you're not alone. Your salvation was bought and paid for with a price. It is bought and paid for and maintained by Jesus, not by you. So no matter how you feel, feelings are the wind. They come and go. They blow in different directions and our feelings change. But truth never changes. And that's the beauty of a truth. It doesn't change with society. It doesn't change with our feelings. It doesn't change with public opinion. Truth is always truth. And God's word is truth. Number two, he will be with us always. Man, I love the the thought that no matter where I'm at in life, whether on a mountaintop or in a valley, God is there with me. He hears and invites our prayers. Man, God already knows our thoughts, but he in his sovereign will ordained it that you and I should pray. He wants us to pray to be in communion with God. And I love that I have a savior who never gets tired of my feelings, never gets tired of my wounds and my pains. I have friends that I can call up and after 20 minutes of complaining, they're like, all right, I had enough. Do you know you can play, you can complain to God nonstop and he's always willing to hear it, but he will heal it. He wants to hear it so that he can heal it. And that brings you and I so much hope. Nothing is impossible with faith. Scripture says that you can look at that mountain and cast it into the sea with faith and it will happen. All you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. Man, and that's all you need. Today, I come uh, to, to this Easter Sunday with a little bit of faith. That's all I have. But I know God responds well to faith. Do you know why? Because faith, no matter what size it is, is irresistible to God. My faith, my mustard seed has been beaten up. It's been kicked. It's been trampled by COVID-19, but it's not broken. I will still have victory because my faith is in the hands of God. My faith is not my own. It was placed within me by God because scripture says that the unbeliever has a veil that the enemy keeps before their eyes. And you know what God did? He pulled back that veil so that I can see God clearly. And so can you. Number five, we can have true freedom through Christ. Six, our lives can bear fruit through him. The scriptures is very clear. Once we give our lives to Christ, the Holy Spirit is deposited in your life and mine. And the Holy Spirit's uh, 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 ministry in your life is really three part to to draw you to God through repentance, uh, to help you live a godly life. And number three, to empower you for ministry with all of these awesome spiritual gifts. Man, you will bear fruit for his kingdom. That means your life has purpose. That means God desires you. It means God purposed you for this time in history. You got this. You don't think you got this, but you got this. Not only are you going to make it through, but you're going to be a blessing to everybody around you because God ordained you. Number seven, we have power through the Holy Spirit. Number eight, he is preparing a place for us in heaven right now as we speak. Jesus in Hebrew says that he's our advocate who sits at the right hand of the Father praying constantly for you and I. Man, Oftentimes when we're struggling, we go to our fellow believer, our, 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 our brother and sister in Christ, and we're like, hey, could you pray for me? Scripture says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. We are to bring our prayers to one another and ask each other to intercede on our behalf and to pray. But do you know Jesus is praying on your behalf and mine too? And you don't even have to ask him for it. He's doing it constantly because the battle is the Lord's, not yours. He is fighting your battle and mine. Man, and Jesus saves fully and completely because your past died with him, your future rises with him. And when you place your faith in Christ, man, you have the hope of a new beginning. And I have the hope of a new beginning. And if you're sitting here today and you're like, man, I have doubts. Man, it's okay. You are not alone. There's a guy in scripture that we talk about and his name's Thomas, right? He's an apostle of Christ. And many of us call him Doubting Thomas. The guy's got a bad rap simply because he was honest. Let's change his name for a moment. Instead of doubting Thomas, we're going to call him Honest Thomas because many of you and myself, we're sitting with doubts. Is this going to be over? Is the world ever going to be the same? We're asking all these questions. And doubting Thomas, man, he was a man who was broken and grieving for the Lord that he loved, who had died on Good Friday. And the apostles came to him and they're like, Thomas, he rose from the dead. And Thomas is like, man, I, I want to believe that. I want to believe that he's alive and with us, but I saw him on that cross. I I saw him 
breathe his last breath. I saw him die. I can't believe unless I see with my own eyes and touch with my own hands. And do you know what? God did not reject Thomas for his unbelief because it was actually in faith that he was honest enough to bring his unbelief before the the church, and before God. And he says, I want to believe. Help my unbelief, which reminds me of another story. And and this is what Scripture says. Jesus comes to Thomas, and this is what he says to him. Then Jesus told him, after allowing Thomas to touch his hand, see, your unbelief does not cause God to reject you. It actually causes God to be interested in you. That when you are honest before God, and you're like, God, I'm struggling with unbelief. Help my belief. God, I want to believe, but I need to see you. I need to touch you, like Thomas said. God responds to that because faith is irresistible to God. And when you are struggling with unbelief, and you're honest about it, and you invite God, I want you to do that right now. Say, God, I'm struggling. I'm struggling, Lord, with unbelief. Would you reveal yourself to me like you did with Thomas? Lord God, because I know this prayer is irresistible to you. So then Jesus allows Thomas to see him and to touch him. In verse 29 of John 20, uh, chapter 20, then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are those. Blessed are you right now. Jesus is in heaven and he's advocating for your behalf and mine. We look back 2,000 years and we place our faith in a resurrection story. If you do that, you are blessed. Do you realize you are blessed more so than the person who actually sees Jesus? Because your faith, it's a blind faith like a child. Man, but if you're struggling with unbelief, bring it to God. You need to go to God with your unbelief. There's an amazing story uh, in Mark chapter 9, and it's a story of a father who was struggling with a sick son, and his son had an evil spirit that would, would cast him into the fire, would throw him down into seizures. And man, this guy heard about Jesus. Man, is this the guy who heals the sick? Is this the guy who gives sight to the blind, uh, uh, causes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, the lame to walk? Is this the guy who heals the leper? Like, Man, I I want to believe if he did that for them, he can do that for me. He can deal with my situation. Man, this Jesus, he can meet my needs. Some of you are sitting there right now praying for a loved one who is sick. Maybe you're grieving a loss. Some of you are dealing with sickness yourself or the fear of getting sick. And you're like, man, if Jesus did that for them, will he do it for me? So the guy approaches Jesus. And he says, Jesus, this is my situation. And, And he explains it to the Lord. And Jesus asks some questions. And this is Jesus' response in verse 23. If you can, Jesus said, if you can believe, everything is possible for him who believes. If you can believe, anything is possible for you. Now, some of you are sitting there going, man, God, I believe. Others are saying, man, I'm still struggling with belief. And then it goes on. Immediately, the boy's father, he said to Jesus, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Look at the honesty in that. Jesus said, anything is possible for he who believes. The man says, Jesus, man, I believe. Help me with uh, with my unbelief. Some of you right now need to say that to the Lord. God, help me with my unbelief. I need a touch. I've been so overcome with grief, with fear, with anxiety. Jesus, I'm so fearful right now. I can't even hear you. Do you know that when you go to Jesus and say, I believe, help me with my unbelief, he meets you right where you're at. Man, it's like that woman who had the issue of blood in Scripture. Man, there was this woman who heard the same thing, this Messiah who was going around healing the sick, raising the dead, bringing sight to the blind, and there was a big crowd around him. And she's like, man, I have an issue. I'm sick. I I, I need healing. If I could just get close to him. If I could just be in his, in his vicinity, I'll be healed. The woman had faith. If I just press in, if I just go into the crowd and I find him, there he is. I see Jesus. I see him through the crowd. Man, I got to make my way to Jesus. I got to push through the obstacles of fear. I got to push through the obstacles of anxiety. I have to turn off the media. I have to turn off my news feed on social media. I need to get through all the naysayers and the negative people because I know my healing comes from the Lord. I know my hope comes from God. I know my healing that I need from my soul. All in my body is only in the hands of my Messiah. God, I'm going to push through. God, I'm going to press through. God, I'm going to walk forward. There he is. If I could just touch the edge of his cloak, and that's exactly what the woman did. She touched the the edge of his cloak in faith, but before she touched it, she pushed through. She plowed her way through. She forced her way through because she knew where her hope came from. Her hope came from the Lord, not from the things around her, not from what the world could offer her. Her hope was in Jesus. This issue, this sickness I have, it could 
could take me out. It could kill me. But if I could just touch my Lord and Savior, if I could just touch Him, I'll have healing for my soul and, and, and in my life. And she touched Him and immediately Scripture says that the power, Jesus felt it leave His body and He knew that He had healed somebody and He looks and He's like, who touched me? Now He knew He was Jesus. So this was like a test. Who touched me? And the apostles are like, Jesus, like, we're in a big crowd. Like, what do you mean who touched you? There's 10,000 people all pushing against you. And he looks and he said, it was you. It was you right now pressing through in faith. It was you right now sitting on that couch saying, Jesus, I need to touch you. It was you right now sitting at that dining room table, at that kitchen table. Maybe it was you sitting on the floor of your living room. It's you in your bedroom that touched me just now. And I'm going to bring healing to your soul. I'm going to bring healing to your mind. I'm going to bring healing to your heart. You don't have to fear anymore because I've overcome the world. You don't have to live in anxiety anymore because I've overcome sickness and death and sin. I've overcome it and so will you. Jesus is saying, reach out and grab my hand. You aren't going to sink. You're not going to drown. COVID-19 is not going to overtake you. Your trust is in the Lord. Your trust is in me. The battle is not yours, but the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. And you know what Jesus did after after he rose from the dead, he hit the road. Say hit the road right now. You could even write that in the, in the chat. Jesus will meet you right where you're at. That's right. He rose from the dead and he hits the road going to a town called Emmaus. And there's two guys on that road that are talking and they're like, man, we just lost Jesus. Man, we, he died on a cross. What will our future be? Where will our hope be? Well, man, all that we hoped in has died. And Jesus is like, no, it didn't. Man, I'm going to step into your darkness. I'm going to step into your pain. I'm going to step into your anxiety. I'm going to step into your hurts, your wounds, your sickness. And I'm going to bring healing to your soul first. And then I'm going to redeem your situation. I'm going to write you a new narrative. I'm going to write a new story because your story is not yours, but it is the Lord's. I am the redeemer of your soul. I'm the savior of your life. I'm the heal bringer and the mighty physician in your life. Man, that is where God is at. God is in your situation. God is on your couch. God is in your living room. Man, you belong to God because His blood is shed for you and for I. All that is required is that you and I place our faith and our hope in Jesus. You see, Jesus had a tomb moment. All of us at some point or another are going to have a tomb moment. Think about that. Life is hard at times. It's difficult. It's challenging. And before Jesus wore a crown, He wore a cross, folks. And I think of David. David was in the cave with about 300 folks. Man, I knew God. Man, God spoke over my life. I'm supposed to be this mighty king of Israel. But right now, I'm running for my life and I'm hiding in a cave. Right now, we're in the cave of COVID-19. But that doesn't cause me to fear because it's in the cave where I meet God face to face. It's in the cave that God becomes a savior. Some of you have been praying for a miracle. Do you know in order to get a miracle that necessitates a trouble, that necessitates a trial, a difficulty, God will redeem you through it. The God you've been praying for, you will meet in the valleys of your life. Hold on to that, folks. It's the God that you pray for becomes your God in that valley. You learn and meet Jesus as Savior when you need saving. It's often on the mountaintop where things are going well. We're praying less. We're hoping less. We don't need a miracle. But it's when we fall off of that mountain head first into the valley and we're down and we're in pain it's in that valley that He rescues us and pulls us up. It's, it's the gap between your prayer and your miracle where faith is built. It's the gap between your prayer and your miracle where you meet God. It's the gap between your prayer and your miracle where He becomes a Savior of your life. Do you know your pain? Do you know your tomb? Your cave is a vehicle of change in your life. It's an agent of change. It's a catalyst to faith. It's where your faith and your maturity are built. But man, we're not in that cave alone, folks. We are not in that tomb alone. We are there with God because the battles you face, they're not your own, but they're the Lord's. And that brings us to a story as we wrap up this message, the story of Jehoshaphat in the Bible. That's right, there was a king and his name was Jehoshaphat. And he was the fourth king of Judah. And he's at a time in history where Israel wasn't very strong. And there was an outside army that came in that were a group of folks called the, uh, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the, the Meunites. And they were bringing war against Jehoshaphat and Judah. They, they were, and they, and they were fearful. The, the Israelite people were fearful because they would have been annihilated. They lacked the ability to defend themselves, to protect themselves, to protect their families. And this is where we're going to pick up in the story. They were under great pressure. Uh, great. There was a threat before them, much like there is between you and I today. We are under a similar threat, maybe not of an army, but of an invisible virus. Uh, we're in a war. 
in many ways, with deep within our soul, with fears, anxieties, with the things that this virus is causing. And we are under a similar attack in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3 and 4. Let's pick up there. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. You see, Jehoshaphat was alarmed. He was fearful. He was honest about his emotions. He did not wear fake faith. He was honest. God, I'm scared. God, I'm alarmed. Who's going to get sick next? Who's going to get this bug? Is it going to be me? Is it going to be my kids? Is it going to be my elderly parents? God, I've lost a loved one because of this. God, I'm alarmed. And Jehoshaphat, this mighty king, resolved, man, I'm going to go to God. Where do you go in your pain? What do you run to in your pain? Do you run to that addiction? Do you run to that that thing that is counterfeit, that is going to make you feel better? Jehoshaphat ran to the Lord and he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek help. You see, the people of God right now, guys, we have to come together in faith. We're we're fighting an invisible enemy. The battle is not ours, but the Lord's. But how do we fight? With the weapons of our warfare. The weapons of our warfare, it's this book. It's the Word of God that we stand on. It's the truth that we proclaim. It's the promises we remind ourselves of. It's what we speak. Man, it's prayer. It's fasting. It's all of those spiritual disciplines because there is a spiritual war before us as well as a physical war. And right now there are angels and demons fighting and your prayers, man, have power in that war. Somehow God and His sovereignty have purposed it that He not only desires you to pray, but it is a weapon that you wield. We are not just defensive, guys. We are offensive. And the way we wage war, the way we do war is through prayer, through fasting, through reading the Word, through claiming it. We praise our way through the pain. Do you know that your praise is the peacemaker of your pain today? So what did Jehoshaphat do when all these folks got together? He proclaimed the goodness of God. He reminded them, that man, we got to claim our way through vis- victory. We have to walk our way through victory. We have to push our way through, through the challenges before us. Like the woman who pushed her way through the, cl- the crowd, Jehoshaphat in faith did the same thing. Verse 9, if calamity comes upon us, man, if the end is here, if we get uh, hurt by what's before us, if COVID-19 makes us sick, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, We will stand. Man, I want you to turn to the person next to you. Say to yourself if you're sitting there, just you and God, or maybe in the chat room, put we will stand. We will stand in the presence before the temple that bears your name and we will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and you will save us. God, even if calamity comes upon us, even if I get sick, even if my loved ones get sick, God, I will run to your name, God. I will find uh, protection in the shelter of the Most High. I will find protection from the elements of this world. I will find protection in your shadow. God, and I know if I cry out to you, God, it may not happen immediately. It may not happen right now. But God, as I cry out, my faith is irresistible to you, God. It is irresistible to you, God. And I cry out in faith, not only will you hear us, but God, you are faithful. You are going to save me. I don't have to fear that this is not going to turn out well. I know it will. My eyes right now may see despair, but there's an inner man. There's a spiritual man deep within my soul who has spiritual eyes. And you know what I see, God? I see a great victory. You know what I see, God? I see a light at the end of this tunnel. You know what I see, God? I see things turning out for your good. I see that all things work together for good of those who love the Lord. I see that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God, I will walk in victory. God, I will walk in healing. God, my despair will turn to joy. You will take away the ashes I've sinned in God and give me a cloak of, of, of praise. Lord God, praise is the peacemaker to my pain because the victory is the Lord's. And Jesus, because you rose from the dead, because Lord, you had victory over sin, death, sickness, disease, and pestilence, so will I, because as you took my sin and my death onto yourself, you have placed upon me, Lord God, you've justified me, you've atoned for my sins, you've paid my debt. God, you have credited me your holiness. You have credited to me your righteousness. God, and now I know that I walk strong. I know that I walk tall, Lord God. I know that I'm going to have victory over my enemies. I know that I'm going to have victory over COVID-19. I know that only goodness and blessing is before me, God, despite the circumstances I'm in. God, I know you're good even when my circumstances stink. Lord God, because you're faithful and you're just. Verse 11 how they are repaying us. So the army, let's talk about this first. So the army was still coming in. So Jehoshaphat is praying all this. He's speaking in faith. He's believing a big God for big miracles like you and I are today. But they were still there. And 
And this is what he says, now they are repaying us, those people, those enemies, by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Verse 12, our, our God, will you not judge them? God, will you not bring an end to COVID-19? God, will you not bring an end to this quarantine that is causing me to feel depression, anxiety, isolation? God, this is a trigger for me. Some of you right now are sitting there at home and you have lost loved ones, not in COVID-19, maybe months ago, years ago. And this horrible situation we are all in together is a trigger for you. And it's bringing up past wounds. It's bringing up past grief. You're being re-traumatized by what the past brought you to. But God is faithful. He will bring you through what life has brought you to. And that's where this group of people are at. God, will you not judge COVID-19? Will you not bring an end to this? God, will you not bring healing to my soul for past losses and wounds? For we have no power, God, to face this threat, this vast army by ourselves. God, we can't without you. Guys, we can't beat COVID-19 without God. Man, the government can't fix this. The doctors can't fix this. The ventilators can't fix this. Only God himself has to snap his fingers and bring an end to it. God, we cannot overcome without you. But here's the good news, guys. We are not alone. God is with you. God is for you. Man, we go to God with our troubles. Come to me, all ye who are tired and weary. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. God will give you rest for your soul. And he says, we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do but our eyes are on you. Guys, when you don't know what to do, you have to look up to the heavens. When you don't know what to do, your knees, man, you got to get some calluses on these knees. You need to hit the ground in prayer. You need to pray your way through this storm. Man, when we don't know what to do, what do we do? We look up. When we don't know what to do, man, we look to God for the answers, folks. And you know what? Right now, people are coming back to God like crazy. Some of you are turning, tuning in right now and you have not been in church in a long time. You haven't sat in a church service and today may be your first in months, years, maybe decades. But God has ordained it that you would be here. You're looking to God because you're suffering. So what do we do when we don't know what to do? We look toward God because our answer comes from the maker of heaven and earth. Scripture goes on, verse 13. All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. Say, say all. Write that in the chat, the word all. All of us guys have to come together in one mind and in unity. And we need to storm the gates of heaven together. God, redeem this season we're in in COVID-19 and deliver us from it, God. There is power in the prayers of many. When the church comes together, what does Scripture say? The enemy cannot overcome the church. The enemy cannot defeat the church. We are the bride of Christ. Do you know Jesus takes care of his bride? Guys, we are the bride of God. Man, you are precious to God. We have to come together just like Jehoshaphat and all of Judah. We need to come together and we need to storm the gates of heaven. Not like people who are scared, but victorious soldiers of God. Man, I boldly walk in to the throne room of God. So then there was a prophet and the prophet begins to speak to them and, and he responds and God sends the prophet because he responds to the unity of the people. Man, let's pick up 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 20, verse 15. We'll pick up in the middle of, of uh, verse 15. This is what the Lord says to you, the prophet announces. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. Don't be dismayed or discouraged because of COVID-19. Don't be dismayed or discouraged because your family's at home uh, under quarantine and you guys are struggling and you're arguing and you're fighting. Man, don't be discouraged because of your situation, whatever that is. For the battle is not yours, but it is God's. The prophet reminded the people, man, you've looked up to heaven. You look toward God in your situation. When you didn't know what to do, you went to the person who does know what to do. Man, in your despair, your despair, your pain, your wounds, your valley brought you to God and God knows what to do and the battle is His. He's going to take your situation. He's going to transcend you above it and He's going to fix it. The battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Verse 17, you will not have to fight this battle, folks. Take up your positions. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will give you. And isn't that interesting? You won't fight this battle. This battle is not yours, but God says be ready. Why? Because you're a soldier on behalf of God. You're part of God's army, but you never have to fight. All you have to do is pray. Man, maybe that is spiritual fighting. You have to stand in faith and fast. God will fight your battles. God will deliver you through it. But stand firm. Be ready. Be on watch. Be on guard. Because God's about to do something amazing in your life and mine. So stand firm, the Lord says. 
Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow. Go out and face COVID-19. Face your fears. Face your anxieties. Face the uh, feelings that have come up because of isolation or, or even the past traumas that have been triggered. And the Lord will be with you. Guys, you're not walking alone. You, are, you may be walking into an unknown future, but you're walking into the unknown with a known God who has a good resume in your life and mine. And you know what Jehoshaphat did? Man, it's really quite amazing. He humbled himself. The people humbled themselves before, the God, before God of the universe. And they took, um, they took up their battle positions in the shadow of the Most High in faith like you and I are doing right now. And he appointed a group of people to go ahead of the army praising the Lord. They literally went ahead to face their adversary in battle praising and singing joyfully unto God. That's what they did. And they worshiped God as they were approaching this vast army. Do you know praise is the peacemaker to your pain? Watch what I mean. So after doing this, they walked forward, the, the, this group of folks that were praising God. And this is what they were saying. They were giving thanks to God for His love endures forever. And they were reminding themselves, no matter what we face, His love endures forever. No matter what's before us, His love endures forever. No matter what giant is before us, God is going to give us the stones to have victory. No matter what pestilence is before us, God is going to bring us through. No matter what famine is before us, God is going to bring us manna from heaven. Man, God is going to meet our need because His love endures forever. His love doesn't stop because of COVID-19. He didn't turn His back on you in your fear and anxiety. God is with you right now today. In verse 24, when the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert, as they peeked over the hill, guys, I know we're praising. I know we're worshiping God through this, but let's just peek over the hill. Let's see what our enemies look like. Let's see how big that army is. As we looked above, you know what they saw? They saw an annihilated army. In the midst of their praise and their worship, the enemy got confused. In the midst of their praise and worship, God was working behind the scenes. In the midst of them facing the hardest battle of their life. And for some of you, that's COVID-19. For some of you, that's grieving the loss of a loved one. In the midst of them facing this giant battle, God was doing something deep in their soul, deep in their heart. God was leveraging it. They, start, they got confused and they started fighting each other and they actually annihilated each other. So when Jehoshaphat and Judah looks over the top, what they saw was all of their adversaries done completely defeated by the Lord. And you know what? We have faith in a resurrection. Anything you face in life, healing, salvation, making wrongs right is all made possible by that tomb moment. Man, Jesus came out of the tomb. So will you. Jesus walked out of death and despair. So will you. Jesus had victory over sin. So do you in Christ. See, whatever you're facing, Jesus faced it first. You are not alone. God is with you. God is for you. Who can be against you? Man, the victory is the Lord's. He's already had it. What you're praying for victory now for, that victory was already had 2,000 years ago when he threw the stone away, when he walked out of that, that grave as a conquering king. What you need is in Christ. And God is already working on your behalf and my behalf. Because what does Scripture say in John 3.16? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but they shall have eternal life. If you believe in Jesus, guys, you won't perish. If you believe in Jesus, COVID-19 will not overtake you. It won't take your joy. It can't steal the joy that is, that is from God. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it. Guys, Jesus doesn't want to judge you. He wants to bless you. We are in right now an age of blessing, an age of grace, where Jesus has created a window from the point of His resurrection to the point of final judgment, book of Revelation stuff, that we are in a window, in a season of great grace and mercy. Whatever you've done in your life, whatever you feel guilty for, whatever sin and shame you have, it is washed away by Jesus. He doesn't want to judge you. He wants to love you. He doesn't want to send you to hell. He wants to love the hell out of you. Understand that. He wants to take you away from the adversary because He loves you and He loves me. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned. If you place your faith in Jesus, you will not be judged. You will not be condemned. You will not be cursed. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Those who believe in God receive forgiveness, mercy, and grace. Those who choose not to, it's a choice, folks. Those who choose not to step aside, step away from, step out of His grace, mercy, and deliverance. They stand condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. See, guys, it gets even better. When you surrender your life to Jesus, understand something. 
the Holy Spirit gets deposited into your life. And Jesus right now is at the right hand of God the Father and he's praying on your behalf and mine. Man, today, as we celebrate Easter Sunday, we celebrate an empty tomb. We celebrate a God who has victory in your life and mine. This is the most important, man, Easter, Passion Week, Holy Week that I've ever had. Good Friday meant more to me this year than it ever had. Easter Sunday means more to me today than it ever had in my life because right now we're in a tomb moment. But as Jesus walked out, man, I'm walking with him. As Jesus walks out of that tomb, I'm going with him. As Jesus has victory over sin and death, I'm going with him and so could you today. All that you have to say is Jesus, just like Peter when he stepped out and he started walking on water and he started to sink because he took his eyes off of Christ. Guys, fix your eyes on Jesus. Stick your hand up out of the water and say, Jesus, grab hold of my hand. Like the woman with the issue of blood, you got to push through that crowd and you got to believe Jesus is going to meet you where, where you're at because he's faithful to do that. Your faith is irresistible to God. You see, the enemy, he can't have what God saved. I want to give you an opportunity today. If you want to know that you're not going through this season alone, just like Jesus said, all of you guys are going to be scattered. You're all going to leave me. And I may feel alone, but I'm not alone because God is with me. I've overcome the world. And that's where you're going to find your peace. If you want that, it starts simply by placing your trust in Jesus. It's, the Bible says very easily, very clearly, that if you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for your sins and you confess that with your mouth, you're saved. That's it. You can be in a relationship with Jesus simply by faith. And it only requires faith. Works cannot buy your salvation and it can't maintain it. Only faith in Jesus can. And this is the way you do that. If you guys at home right now, if you're there and you're saying to yourself, man, I want a relationship with God. I want forgiveness for my sins. I want a drink of a, a, of a living water that will replenish my soul. I want hope in my life. I want hope through COVID-19. If that's you, I want to invite you right now to place your faith in Jesus. And it's easy. Just pray this prayer with me. And if you believe this in your heart, you're saved. Let's pray this prayer together. Father God, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for my sins. I believe that he rose from the dead. I place my full trust and hope in Jesus Christ. I ask you, God, to show me grace and mercy. Forgive me for all of my sins and transgressions. I now surrender my life over to you. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to be deposited into my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you just prayed that, understand this. That prayer, if you meant it, it has all the power in the world because Jesus will always respond to your faith. If you made a faith decision to say, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. If that is a decision you just made with us, we want to hear about it. Please email us at fusionchurchny.com forward slash believe. Again, that's fusionchurchny.com forward slash believe. And we want to celebrate that all important decision you just made. Maybe you didn't make that decision, but you have questions about becoming a follower of Jesus. We want to answer those questions the best we can. Please email us at the same location again, uh, fusionchurchny.com forward slash believe, and please put your question there, and we will contact you back and answer any questions you may have. Guys, thank you for celebrating this Easter Sunday with us. It's our gift, honor, and privilege to join together with you as one church, uh, join together even though we have to do it virtually. God is with us. God is for you. And I want to pray a prayer blessing over you before uh, we end the service. But um, let, let's do that together. Father God, I pray, Lord, you'd bless every person, Lord that has uh, been part of this message with us, either right now during our live airing or maybe after, God. I pray you'd bless them in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that uh, they would know you're for them. Lord God, that they would place their faith and full trust in you, God, during the midst of this COVID season, Lord God. This season will come to an end. Jesus, we, you rose from the dead and our hope rises with you, God. We place all of our faith and trust in you right now in the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Guys, service is not over yet. We have some really important announcements for you guys. Please stay tuned over the next couple minutes for those announcements. Guys, we look forward to seeing you next Sunday. God bless you guys. Wasn't that an awesome service, everybody? Man, thank you so much for joining us for our Easter service. If you're going through something right now, if you're sick, 
If you have a need, if you have a prayer request, man, we want to hear about it. Please submit to us a prayer request. You'll see it in the chat right now, how to do that a link. But an easy way for you to do it is to do it through our app. Simply download our app if you don't have it by texting Fusion app to 77977. And then you can go to the uh, prayer request tab and let us know how we can pray with you, how we can support you through this difficult time. Also, if you're new to Fusion Church and you wanna be part of what God is doing in and through Fusion Church, man, we wanna connect you. Best way to do that is go to the uh, tile that says connection card, fill out a connection card, let us know how we can best connect with you. Hey parents, we also have something amazing for your kids. So Fusion Kids has an awesome online message right now. You can go visit our Facebook page and the Easter message and their praise and worship will be online. So you can check it out after this. So this month, our community outreach will be partnering with the Community Action Partnership for Dutchess County by donating to their local food pantry. There are so many families in need right now. They've lost jobs, their finances are short, and we just wanna be able to bless them with their basic needs, with food, with hygiene items. So if you're interested in partnering with us to bless our local community, you can donate by texting the word Fusion Give 277977, that's one word, and you can designate that fund to community outreach. All proceeds from that will benefit the food bank directly. If you'd like to donate items, actual food items or hygiene items, let's say you want to pick up something extra while you're already at the store, you can email our office staff. You can email them at office at fusionchurchny.com and we can arrange for a curbside pickup at your home or a curbside drop-off at the office. So please, during this time uh, of COVID-19, we can still be the hands and feet of Jesus by showing love to our community. Thank you. That's right. Listen, as the world seems like it's getting darker, the church has to shine brighter. Guys, know this. When you give to Fusion Church, you're giving to God. You're not giving to a church, folks. You're giving to God through a church. And man, Fusion, you guys are doing some amazing things. Let me tell you, if you don't know what, what, what Fusion Church is doing, God is actually providing to local hospitals. Tell us about some of the hospitals that Fusion Church has been able to I bless. mean, we provided meals to our ERs over at St. Luke's in Newburgh. And uh, we've also given breakfast to the emergency rooms down in New York City, where it's the, like the big hot zone right now for coronavirus. We donated uh, breakfast to the children's emergency department as well as the adult emergency department. And they were just so thankful for your kindness and generosity during this time. Man, you guys have blessed two very important hospitals that are fighting for you. These nurses and doctors and staff are working hard uh, tirelessly uh, to bring an end and, uh, to COVID-19 and to help those that are sick. This is our way to give back. Best way to do that, if you guys want to be part of what God's doing, let's now worship God for our tithes and offerings. And the best way for you to give is you can text to give, which is totally secure. Text the word Fusion Give, one word, to 77977, or you can give over our app just by simply going to the give uh, icon or you can give on our website go to the menu and hit the give tab and those are easy ways to give if you still want to use the postal service uh, please you can uh, you can simply just mail your tithes and offerings to PO Box 190 Fishkill New York 12524 again that's Fusion Church PO Box 190 Fishkill New York 12524 uh, let us just take a moment right now as we prepare our hearts to give. Let me lead you guys in a prayer over our giving. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've given us, God. You give to us faithfully, God. And now we give back to you, God. Um, as the world seems like it's getting darker, may we shine brighter, God. I thank you, Lord, for all that we are able to give, God. Lord God, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would burden our hearts with what to give, that nobody is given giving out of compulsion or obligation, God, but we are giving freely, joyfully, Lord God, with the right heart to be able to be a blessing to the world that you called us to bless. Lord God, the church is your plan A to meet the needs of the world. May we do that, God, in your name, Christ Jesus, amen. Hey guys, as you're giving right now, let me dismiss you with a prayer that Moses prayed over Israel. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May his countenance be lifted upon you and may he bring you rest. With that said, he who once came, Jesus, he's faithful and he will come again. Guys, God bless you. We love you. Follow us Bye. on Instagram. See you soon. Bye.